Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us uh, this evening now, uh, and welcome to what is the eighth and final uh, press briefing for this week. Here in Fulton County, the fat lady has almost sung. All early votes have been counted. All day of votes have been counted. All absentee ballots have been counted. Now we're concluding the process of counting the provisional ballots, and mine happens to be one of those provisional ballots. We've had a very successful election uh, campaign season. We've learned a lot, and we are prepared for the various runoffs that will be taking place during the month of December and, of course, with the senatorial races uh, on January 5th. So again, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Richard Barron, our Director of Registration and Elections, his staff, but more importantly, the volunteers who really worked in many instances around the clock to ensure that uh, this election season, this November 3rd uh, election, would be successful for us. And I'll say again that I had no idea when we first started that Fulton County, Georgia, would play the role that it has played and, and continues to play in determining the next president of the United States of America. Fulton County, Georgia is a big deal. Mr. Barron, Richard Barron, our Director of Registration and Elections. Hey, good evening. Um, let's see, we are finishing up the count for provisional ballots and the UOCAVA which is military and overseas ballots uh, over at the at State Farm Arena. We've passed the time, past 5 p.m., which is the deadline to receive those ballots and to cure any of the provisional ballots. We are on track to complete all those and upload them tonight, which we will be doing. Once those are completed, they'll come over here to the ballot, ballot review board. And then we, um, our team is also preparing for the start of early voting for the December 1st runoff for Congressional District 5. We also have indications that there will be two other runoffs, but the early voting for those will begin later in the month. They, that will happen after certification. But it looks like there could be a, a runoff for Public Service Commission as well as Senate District 39. Those will happen on December 1st. And then there will be a runoff for at least one of the Senate races on January 5th. We will begin the closeout process, including balancing all the precincts and risk limiting audit in the next few days. Um, we will pro it, the last figure I had with the provisional ballots is we'll probably be uploading 3,812 tonight. I know there were more than 900 overseas ballots that will be also uploaded. And I think one, one of the things that has been a positive outcome is that a lot of people have great appreciation for all of the work that all of the election workers and the poll workers do, which is positive because there are so many people behind the scenes that do a lot of work that no one really uh, knows about because it takes months to prepare for an election, especially a big one like this. And I wanna again thank all of our employees who have put in so much of their time, uh, lost weekends, lost time with family. Uh, we had a big COVID outbreak here in the warehouse. 25 people uh, became infected who worked out here. Um, so that brings us to 28 infections this year, and that's hit, hit the staff hard. But we, um, we persevered through it and had a successful election day. I also want to read a statement about a video that I'm sure some of you have seen circulating uh, about an election worker that was over at State Farm. I personally spoke to him, and the State Election Board had a monitor over there who witnessed the whole thing. And... I'm just going to read from a prepared statement that we, that we made. But we conducted a review of a video that was uploaded to Twitter, which featured a poll worker assigned to work in absentee ballot processing. According to the video, the worker has been accused of discarding a ballot assigned while being assigned to operating one of the five ballot cutting machines. These devices are used to 
cut the envelopes so that you can then separate the outer envelope from the inner envelope. It's been questioned whether the poll worker featured in the video was discarding one of those ballots. The answer is, un, is no, undeniably no. At no time was the poll worker able to extract a ballot. I operated one of those machines. The only thing you do at that station is separating the envelopes and cutting them. The ballot extraction happens at the next stage of the process. And ballot extraction only occurs with the workers who are, who are assigned to those sorting duties. After review of the footage, I contacted him. He is currently in hiding because he's had threats. He's had to shut down all of his social media. And they know all of his personal information was released. Um, personally, I think it's shameful. He, um, he was merely discarding a list of instructions that had been put into one of the envelopes. It was taken and uploaded to, a Twitter, to Twitter by an individual in the absentee ballot processing area. And that has now resulted in someone having to leave his house and go stay with friends. He's afraid to drive his car because the information about his car and his license plate is out there. The release of the video and its caption led viewers to believe the worker was agitated, which resulted in the worker crumbling and discarding a ballot. However, one thing that you need to know is that those ballots are eight and a half by 19 inches long. In no time did you see him extract anything from, a, from the envelope and that crumpled piece of paper was, they were instructions and it was a smaller piece of paper. Voters often include list of instructions like the one discarded in the primary absentee ballot envelope when submitting their ballots in the mail and or drop boxes. And he was one of the workers that we had who trained everyone how to use those cutting machines because he was very good at it. And he was the fastest one. We depended on him and he's no, he's no longer out there right now. Um, so I told him, I expressed my sorrow in that all of this has happened to him simply for wanting to be um, an election worker and, and doing nothing but a good job during that. And so I can, I can take questions now. Any questions? What time was the provisional and the overseas be uploaded? They were still opening and scanning when I left to come over here. So it'll be sometime tonight. Like overnight or even before midnight? Oh, I, I think it's gonna be, be most of it is complete over there. But we had, they didn't deliver Yokava until after um, 5 p.m. over there. So it's going to be, yeah, unless the, the last uh, accounting that I got was 3,812 provisional. Um, it could be, there was a member of our staff that was doing research on some of the, on some of them to make sure that some of the rejected ones by, by staff she goes through and ch does a check every election on the rejected ones and does more research to make sure that any of the ones that can be accepted do because she's got much more experience than the, than the other staff that, um, that we bring in to help us during election cycles. Not, well, nobody was kicked out. I, I verified that, and, and I know somebody from external affairs was there, and no announcement was made about that. At one point, there was an indication by my staff that they would stop for the night. I told them to keep going until at least 1 in the morning, which is when they stopped, they stopped over there. But at no time were observers told to leave. Yes. 
Yes, there, there was a state, somebody from the state election board was over there, and I think a state investigator went over there as well, so. Uh, Rick, what kind of precedent does... Just, just one second, yeah. So, um, you guys have, like, overhauled the way that the election system works because of the pandemic. So, after the virus has wiped out, is the early voting system going to look so robust? I mean, uh, you know, what's changed because of the way you had to adapt to the virus? Um, well, I think we have had to, um, a lot of the procedures that we've had to undertake have changed just because, um, like for example, all of this equipment, most, we had to move all of this over to Georgia World Congress Center, which we're going to have to probably do again, um, before the next election just to prepare it because um, when you get into, a, even though there's a lot of circulation in here, um, when you get a lot of people in a smaller confined space like this, and this isn't even all of our carriers, some of them are down at another warehouse now, um, it, there's just a risk to that. I think what, what this virus has shown us is that we, we have to do things um, a little bit differently. I mean, there are a lot of things that that we're doing now that we, I guess we haven't done before. And, and honestly, right now, I'm probably too tired to think about all of everything that we're doing differently. But if you want to talk to me offline, I can sit down with you and go over that. Yes. Right, right. Well, it'll be uploaded tonight. That's correct. And then also, uh, on the ballots that are arriving here at the warehouse, will they be coming? Are they coming in sections, or is everything already here? Um, I think there's a, the ballot review committee is already meeting, so I think they they did an upload earlier and sent. They might have sent partial results over here, um, and then the rest of them will come tonight because they were to meet at two thirty. So I think they sent something over for them to review. Uh, I think at most times it was around 3,000. Uh, that's, that's probably about the average. Any other questions? I, I know it was at least 900. That, and that came over the last couple of days, the last, I think, two or three days. There are already Yulkaba in the absentee. We don't hold them until the end. It's, but we receive them after, we receive them, we can receive them up until today. So anything that was received in the last couple of days, that's what's coming out tonight. Uh, do you have an understanding, I asked this the other day, of how many ballots might have just been snagged by USPS? And so the deadline's approaching for uh, ballots to be received. Uh, is there anything stuck in the mail that's just never gonna be counted? I, I, you'd have, I don't know. I mean, um, look, what, what I do know from talking to people at the Postal Service over uh, several weeks ago is that the, the Postal Service seemed to me to be as committed to getting those ballots to us as anyone. So I, I, I don't want to, you know, cast aspersions on the Postal Service for something that I believe they were trying hard to do, which was to get the ballots to us. I don't know what happens in their system, but I think that that would probably be better directed to them. Is, um, is there a scenario where Fulton County's total would be different at all or with any significant recount? Well, it, it just when you're going to recount, I think I, I haven't looked at what our final results are. Um, but I think we're somewhere up in the 520,000 range right now. And uh, I would expect that I've never seen a recount uh, with any kind of volume where the results don't change by a few here and there. So it wouldn't surprise me. And I think the last time we did a recount here was probably 2017 mayoral. 
and I believe we had um, an 11 vote difference in, in that. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if something changes. That, that's a lot of ballots. We haven't had any th any threats sent to the office, although, um, and I did talk to him about that, and I think there there's been some preliminary discussions about whether or not we need to do something to to give him some sort of protection. But um, I don't want to get into that right now. If there are no more questions, thank you all for coming. Thank you very much.